Hello everyone, welcome to Pristine AI. In this video, we are going to talk about NiFi Kafka integration. So this is a two part video. In the first part, we are going to discuss about how we can publish the messages to the Kafka topic using NiFi. And in the second part, we are going to consume the messages published by the published to Kafka processors with NiFi. So let's get started. We are going to look into two flows that uses two different kind of processors that is provided by NiFi. So the first processor is the published Kafka processor and the second processor is the published Kafka record processor. We are going to look into both of these processors. Difference between the two processors is the published Kafka processor expects that the data is available in a text format and the data is available in the content of the flow file and if there are multiple records it expects that the records are delimited with a delimiter like a new line whereas in the published Kafka record if you have record in CSV format and you want to convert that record into the JSON format or an Avro format you can use published Kafka record processor which uses the concept of a record reader which can convert the data before sending it to the Kafka topic. We are going to see more about this processor in some time. In the first flow, we are going to generate the message using the generate flow file processor. Inside the generate flow file processor, we have used the custom text. Let me show you how this text looks like. We can see that we have a JSON object available. In this JSON, we have name, we have address, we have details. So name would be like John Doe, address is the work address as well as home address. And in the detail, we can see that it has the following attributes. We have the position, position is a data flow engineer, preferred state is New York, and primary skill is NiFi. And there are other secondary skills as well like Kafka, Spark, Hadoop, and machine learning. We are going to start the generate flow file processor and get one message and let me stop it. Otherwise it will keep on generating the messages every 10 seconds as we have configured it in the scheduling mode. If I don't stop this processor, it will keep on generating the same messages every 10 seconds. Once we have the message available, we can use the update attribute processor or some other processors in between if we want to uh, do some data processing or want to add some attributes to the flow file. So let's say I want to add a new ID in the update attribute processor. So you can see I have created a new property called flow file ID and in the value I have given a UUID. This particular flow file ID would be added as an attribute to the flow file. Let me start this processor. Finally, we are going to publish the data in the published Kafka processor. So let's look into the configuration of this processor. I am currently running Kafka on my local machine. So you can see the URL is localhost colon 9092. The security protocol is plain text and the SASL mechanism is GSS API. There are other properties available as well. Like if your Kafka is secured, you can use Kerberos, Principal and Key tab to add those details. There are other properties available as well. For now, we are not going to look into those property and keep it as default. Let's start this particular processor and see whether we are going to receive the data in the console consumer. So the topic name is account holder details. So let me go into the account holder details con console consumer and see whether we have received or not. So we can see that we have received the message in this particular topic account holder details. Let me now uh, generate a few more messages and see whether we are going to receive it or not. I am going to start this generate flow file processor and this generate file processor will keep on generating the records and those records would be getting inserted into the Kafka topic. You can see now I have received one more record and the third record. So it will keep on generating the messages every 10 seconds. Let me stop this processor now. Now let's go through this flow. We are going to read a CSV file from the folder called as data input 3003. 
So let me start this particular processor. If I wish to see the content of the flow file, I have to first run the fetch file processor. Let me uh, list the queue and let me see the details. If I go and view the details, I can see there are a lot of records available related to the US healthcare. Now, let me add some more attributes to this particular flow file. If you see, I am going to add a Avro schema. This Avro schema, let me open it in the Notepad++. We can see that we have defined a schema to this particular flow file. We have a schema like for all the columns, we have defined the data type like ID would be a string, gender would be a string and we can expect null over here. So I have defined null label equals true for all the columns. So we have data for different data types. We have string and double and we expect that there would be null values available on these columns as well. We are going to first read this record. We are going to add this attribute. Currently, if I go to the flow file and if I look into the attributes of the flow file, we don't have any Avro schema available over here. Once I start this particular update attribute processor, we will see that we have added a new attribute called as Avro schema. We are going to see how we are going to use this Avro schema in our NiFi flow. We can see that we have already defined the Avro schema. Now let's go to the validate record processor. Validate record processor basically looks into the data. It uh, segregates the valid record using the Avro schema. All the records which adheres to the Avro schema is going to the valid connection route and the records which are not going to uh, adhere to the Avro schema are going to the invalid connection route. So let's first look into the validate record processor. We can see in the validate record processor that it validates the record of the incoming flow file against a given schema. It expects that the schema is in the Avro format. That's why we have defined the Avro schema over here. All the records that adheres to the schema are routed to the valid relationship, while the records that do not adhere to the schema are routed to the invalid relationship. So this particular processor is called the record type of a processor. If I go into the properties, we can see that there are two main properties that we have defined. So the first property is the record reader. Since our data is the CSV format, we have used the CSV reader. If uh, we have uh, the uh, other type of uh, record, we can use another service. So we can uh, use Avro reader, we can use Grok reader, JSON reader, and all other readers that are available in NiFi. So this comes under the controller service section. A controller service basically is something that can be reused by multiple processors. You have to define it once and use it in multiple places where we are going to use this kind of a processor. So controller services can also be for a database kind of a connection. We can create a connection pool for a process group and everywhere we are going to use that connection pool whenever we want to connect to a database. So all those kind of uh, functionality is called as a controller service. So now for reading our data, we have used the CSV reader. CSV reader is going to have a few properties. Let me go inside the CSV reader and see the property of this particular controller service. If I go inside the property, it says that it is going to use schema text property. So whenever we are going to create the Avro schema, it is going to access the schema using the schema text property. And inside the schema text, we are going to pass that particular attribute. You can see to access a particular attribute, we have to pass dollar. Inside curly braces, we can pass the attribute name. We have uh, currently saved the Avro schema in the Avro.schema attribute. That's why we have passed this particular attribute inside the schema text and we are able to read that schema using this particular NiFi expression language. We can also define the date format like by default it would be yyyy-mm-dd but we can also give other formats as well. So whenever the record is going to be passed it will first look into all these formats of date, time and timestamp 
and if the format matches to what we have defined over here it will mark it as a valid record otherwise it is going to mark it as an invalid record there is also a csv format available so you can have a tab delimited csv format a mysql format and in the custom custom format we can use the common csv format or a if your separator is a tilde you can use a tilde format etc record separator uh, the two records that are available in the file by default it is a new line character that is placed in between two files which tells that uh, that is a new record but if you have any other kind of a separator you can pass it over here if our data has the header values we can pass on here true but since we don't have the header information available we are going to pass on false if there are quote characters or escape characters you can pass on these properties as well similarly for writing the records after validating it we are using the csv record set writer and for writing the invalid record we are using the csv record set writer as well because we are going to write the data as csv but if i want to write the data in another format like an avro file we can any any time go into the uh, this particular option and we can create a new service for avro so we have those options available but for now we are going to keep it csv only and as we have seen in the reader kind of a processor writer kind of a processor also have those properties available so if i go to any of the uh, csv record set writer we are saying that we want to use the schema dot text property for accessing the schema and the schema text is our attribute called avro dot schema again while writing we can define the date format timestamp format and other formats as well so once that is done we are going to start this processor once i start the validate record processor we can see that the flow has been uh, now completed and there are two files available one is for the valid record in the valid relationship and other is the invalid relationship record in the valid record we can see that all the record that have passed the avro schema would be available over here so if i go into the content of the uh, flow file we can see a lot of records are valid that's why we are able to get in the valid relationship the records which are invalid goes into the invalid route let me now open this particular queue and see if there are records available in the invalid we can see there are a lot of records that has not passed the rule and uh, they went to the invalid relationship you can see over here we have a lot of records available now once we have those records available we can now publish the records using the publish kafka processor and uh, we can see that the record has been published to the kafka topics so the valid record would go to the valid topic and the invalid record would go into the invalid topic let us see the properties of this publish kafka record processor we can now see that we have broker since it is a local host we have given the local host colon 9092 topic name for valid is us healthcare valid record reader since it is a csv format uh, in the input we have written the csv reader but i want to write my record as a json so i have used a new service called as json record set writer so when i go inside it i can see that there is a json record set writer controller service i have defined the value inside it it also expects the avro schema so i have used the schema access strategy as use a schema text property and i have passed the avro schema that we have already uh, set in the update attribute processor other properties look similar to what we have in the csv writer or csv reader after we have defined all these properties we have to enable the service currently we have enabled it so let's now start this particular processor once i start the valid record processor we can see that the data has been started to flow into the valid record topic if i go inside the console consumer we can see that we have now records available in the published kafka record so all the records that were valid now went to the valid record topic we can see over here similarly 
once I start the invalid flow, we will see that we are able to consume the message in the console consumer for the US healthcare invalid topic. So let's now handle the invalid record. For the invalid record, we are going to use the new schema. Since our record currently has some invalid records, I am going to mark all the columns as a string so that it doesn't fail because of the schema. Now, let me start this particular processor. I have started the update attribute processor and we can see inside the update attribute processor, there is an attribute called as updated arrow schema where all the columns data type is defined as a string. Once I have done that, I'll go inside the published Kafka record for the invalid record processor. We can see that we are going to read the invalid CSV and uh, we are using the invalid JSON CSV record set writer. So the name invalid JSON record set writer is given by us. We can change the name by uh, changing the property over here. I go to the setting and we can see that I have given the name as invalid JSON record set writer, but it is of the type JSON record set writer. So you can change this name as well. Once I uh, start this processor, all the invalid messages will go to the invalid Kafka topic. So I can see over here now that in the invalid topic as well, we have the messages available. So this is how we can use publish Kafka processor in NiFi to publish the message to the Kafka topic received from different source systems. Thank you for watching the first part of the NiFi Kafka integration where we have published the record into the Kafka topic. In the second part of the video, we are going to consume the message in the Kafka topic using the consume Kafka record and consume Kafka processors. Stay tuned for more such videos. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.